This is the recording for the Unit 6 post lab for the heat labs. So question one, of course, is that you attended the lab and that you will hand in the lab report and the conclusions. Then the next question is the motivation. You will find that in the lab manuals. This is for heat capacity. So these two would apply. They are pretty straightforward, pretty obvious. That must be the ones. This one here, of course, tests your knowledge using the equation that you needed to use. So specific heat capacity times mass times temperature difference will give you the heat flow in joules. Notice that when you do the computation, you need to convert the mass to kilograms. Okay. The heat flow error, the quickest way is just to divide these two numbers, 8,200 divided by 6,200 in this case, that's going to be roughly 1.3 something. Drop the 1, and then the point 0.3, what that means is 30% error. That's the quickest way. There is, there's another proper way, which is subtract these two, divide by either this one or this one, and you get a 20 or 30% error. All right, specific heat capacity errors. I kind of call it the error lab because there are so many involved. And it's important to me to point out that when you do an experiment that there can be errors, obviously, and that there are experiments out there where the errors are just abundant. And, and that's why you get um, quite um, inaccurate results. In fact, I'm. Um, quoting a physics lab book which says the, the percent errors of your experimental values of the specific heats may be quite large. Identify several sources of experimental error and that's, that's what I ask you to do here. Uh, they make mostly sense or they virtually all make sense here when you look at these here. So transferring the metal, the immersed thermometer, the tool with which the metal is grabbed and so on, conducts heat, styrofoam, cup, water absorbs, water's exposed surface allows some water to evaporate. Reading the thermometer, there was no caliper screw. There still was no caliper screw, especially the inside of the metal may not be a mixing temperature. That makes sense. Forgetting to add, there were no tuning forks. There were no angles to measure. Reading off the temperature, maybe I did that twice, huh? reading the thermometer at the same, oh no, I didn't, it's actually a little bit different here. Reading off the temperature and reading the thermometer at the same time as making length measurement. Oh, oh, don't do this, don't do this. That doesn't apply. There was no length measurement being done. I just saw the word thermometer earlier. Measuring volume of water and mass of specimen heat flows to the ambient air using too much water trying to find the right time where the temperature bottoms out. All right, as I said, they really make sense. Conclusion, well, that you send us the conclusion. Then the motivation from the heat engines, and again, you're going to go in there, and you will find the obvious ones, including this one here. Virtually every adult living in developed countries is using a heat engine virtually every day, the internal combustion engine, and so on. And this one here is from the lab data itself. That is possibly my example that you find in there. Question, you know, back, back some your experimental data or measure when inserting copy, uh, your result, oh, your results should be similar to these here. And you will see that I believe they're in the correct order. So the mass of the hoop is this much, the radius is this much, since it's a hoop, the rotational inertia comes out to 1 times mr squared. The moment of inertia is computed as this much. The frequency was measured as this much. And again, you have your own measurements, but it's going to be in the ballpark of that one. Angle of velocity when you compute it is this. The rotational energy is this much. It's relatively small, actually. The measured stoppage time. I, in this case here, I used a 
steam engine that ran on camping fuel and, and there it stopped relatively quickly after 14 seconds. You actually probably came up with like one to two minutes, but that's because it was plugged in and when you unplugged it, the boiler inside, the heating element, not the boiler, but the heating element inside was still really hot, so it kept it going for more than a minute or so. Um, so that's why this stoppage time here, mine is relatively short, yours is actually going to be longer. The power supply to keep the hoop rotating is in the neighborhood of this one here. Again, your results are going to be relatively similar to mine, and so on. Errors, there are a few errors involved here, not as much as for the heat capacity, lab, but there are a few. So heat loss of the ambient air, friction between the moving parts of the steam engine. Measuring the stoppage time, measuring the frequency, the engine may be in need of some maintenance, yeah. So systematic random errors, that's what the S and R stand for. And then the conclusion, again, the left-hand side is in the correct order. So this one, first one here would be listing your results, or examples of your results. Then it would be here a comparison of your results. There are no, well, yeah, it's, there are published values, but they're kind of far-fetched because these are real engines while we actually use the toy engine. So in any case, that is still comparing your results, even though the published values really don't apply very well here. Of course, this model used to be in the lab. I made a show principle of the engine, and there, there it is. There's the word toy engine. So next one here is the assessment of the results. And then let's see, going over to the Sterling engine, I believe, was barely able to, oh yeah, other outcomes. So this would be other outcomes. And then, of course, talk about errors. That's what this one is about. Your conclusion doesn't have to be as elaborate as what I'm telling you here or what I'm writing here, but you should be writing something covering those points, the essential points. You don't have to write a term paper, but I like it to reflect on the results that you got, how they compare, further outcomes, and ours. And that was the recording for Post Lab 6.